question for you. What is it that every single big name game designer, no matter what, every single time, constantly, consistently fails to do? Should be obvious, right? Exactly what we want them to. The nerf. Let's face facts, there is no pleasing everyone, and realistically, sometimes anyone. No matter how beautifully a story is written, how masterfully the score is composed, or how perfectly fine-tuned the gameplay is, there will always be someone who doesn't like it. But they're not the ones we're going to concern ourselves with today. No, today we're going to look at the people who love these games, stories, and media so much that they go beyond just consuming it. They become creators. Hello everyone, I'm SpammerD, and welcome to The Reviewer's Dilemma, where we look at the gray areas of game reviewing, and today, I've got fan games on the brain. Now, regardless of your medium of choice, if you look hard enough, you will always be able to find some form of fan, and probably hater, related content. Drawings, fan fiction, cover songs, parody, uh, 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 uh and, um, let's just say different people express their love for a series in different ways. I wonder what that could be! But I'd argue that in the gaming spectrum, making a fan game is the most impressive of the bunch. It's literally putting your money where your mouth is. Just, you know, without the money. But first off, what is a fan game? Well, basically, it's a game made by the fans. Duh using characters, ideas, and possibly art assets without the owner or owner's permission to do so, and as such, isn't exactly restricted by things like copyright, fair use and all. Want Lloyd Irving in Smash? Done. Better written tales in the Pokemon universe? Well, we've got you covered. Data hottie from Love Hina? That's a big old check. You can even pit the Ninja Turtles versus the Justice League. Uh, although, I feel, I feel like I've seen that before. Okay, well, I think you get the gist. Fan games can literally be whatever they want them to be, as long as they can imagine it and they put in the hard work to make it real. That and the IP holders don't take them to court. But that's a whole other thing. But still relative since the characters, mechanics, etc. are all copyright, and thus, you can't make money off of them. Legally. Which also means there's actually very little to gain from making these games, aside from some practice, maybe a little clout, and possibly a kick-ass portfolio piece. But in all honesty, most of these fan games are just passion projects, displays of love and affection for their favorite franchises. Which brings us to today's dilemma, which is twofold. First off, is it even right to review these games? And even if it is, to what standards do we hold them? Let's dive in and figure this out. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter below. But as for me, if my TMNT Rescue Palooza review doesn't paint a clear enough picture, obviously, I don't see any issue in reviewing fan works. In fact, I encourage it. After all, if you're willing to put something out there, literally anything for the world to see, you should probably expect criticism. Trust me, YouTubers know this well. There's really no escaping it. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. And this may sound like a bad PSA, and trust me, I get it. But the fact is that criticism is a key factor for improvement. It's one of those annoying aspects you learn growing up. Ugh, adulting. But when a designer improves as a result, it's kind of win-win for everyone. Better games for us, and more praise and accolades for them. And likes, because we all love likes. You should like. And while nobody truly likes criticism, simple math tells you that the more reviews equals more attention for the game. Cough, cough. You're welcome. Cough, cough. But in all seriousness, that old saying, any press is good press, while debatable, isn't exactly wrong. Of course, the bigger question here, I think, is once you've decided to review a fan game, how do you go about scoring it? What standards do you hold it to? These aren't big AAA companies with millions of dollars to throw around, after all. 
Well, when it comes to fan games and really small team indie games, I for one always live by one golden rule. Don't be a dick. Yeah, seems kind of obvious, I know, but uh, have you met people? Plus, if you want to encourage young budding developers to grow, dumping on them probably isn't the way to do it. Probably. And while comedic, and I am really, really stretching the meaning of comedy when referencing that to my content, but while comedic, ball busting a game's uh, shortcomings is all good and fun and definitely helps reviews feel a little less dry. But I think when it comes to fan games, it's important to at least try to keep it tame, even if that means sacrificing the humor a bit. After all, these devs can't go crying to their big piles of your money to comfort them the way the big players can. But that doesn't mean we should just go and pamper them either. If you're going to review a fan game, it is truly imperative that you make sure you point out what needs to be improved, as well as what works. It's really no different than with the pros. Though, feel free to unleash hell on them. They're getting paid. And it's also important to just be realistic. Holding it against a fan game for not looking, sounding, or playing like a AAA title, something made by scores of industry professionals, is pretty absurd. Set your standards accordingly. Even if you're not reviewing a game and just playing it, it's always wise to keep your expectations in check. But when it comes right down to it, I think if you're going to review a free fan-made game, it's important to go in understanding that the game is a passion project made with limited time and resources, with little to no monetary gain for all their hard work. So it's our job, our privilege, to try and get these games out to the masses, make their names known, and most importantly, help them grow. Because you never know, with the right push and the proper encouragement, these fans might end up making more than just simple fan games one day. And I think that's a win for everyone. Hey everyone, Spammer D here, and well, that's how I chose to resolve this dilemma. Do you agree? Did I forget something? Or am I just flat out wrong? <laughs> ah, that can't be it. But let's hear your solutions in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe, check out my social media, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, my fellow fans.